Hello, everyone. Good evening. I'm Sayukta from Beautiful Spotless Skin Team, and I'm sure all of you must be keeping good health. You must have come across people, especially women with brown color patches on their face. They look like freckle like spots forming large flat patches. This is nothing but melasma. Melasma is a very common chronic skin condition in India. According to study, if we go by the study, then across uh, which was conducted across four Indian states, it reveals that more than 80% of the population presents skin color progeny on their face irrespective of their age and gender. This heterogeneity mainly results from hyperpigmented spot and melasma. Indian skin tone more prone to pigmentary disorders. It occurs mainly in women, 90% and 10% of males of all ethnic and racial groups. Around 20 to 30% of 40 to 65-year-old women present a facial melasma. Melasma and hyperpigmentation generally ignore the sign of aging and often misunderstood skin conditions. Melasma sufferers have been misinformed about aspects of this common hyperpigmentation issue. This can lead to frustrating setback and treatment. So to avoid all these hazards and to keep you informed, today we are here to know more about melasma and management of melasma from an expert. So let's connect today with our skin expert, Dr. Meha Kyagi from Ghaziabad. She is a renowned expert in dermatology with wealth of experience in this very particular field. Dr. Meha's credentials speaks volumes about her dedication to the field of dermatology. Armed with an MBBS and MD in dermatology, she has honed her skills and expertise to address dermatological concerns. Dr. Meha's journey in dermatology is marked by a commitment to excellence and continuous learning. Dr. Meha stands as a beacon of expertise in the field of dermatology providing comprehensive care and innovation innovative solutions to her patients with her expertise today a doctor will enlighten us more on melasma and its management it's such a pleasure to have you with us dr meha a very warm welcome to you thank you Sinta. thank you so much thank you so much for your kind words uh, it's a pleasure, Doctor. And Doctor, as today we are going to talk about melasma, and melasma is quite common in our society, in our country, especially in women. Uh, first of all, we would like to understand what is melasma. So melasma is a very common acquired pigmentary condition, which manifest as discolored patches, symmetrically present over sun-exposed areas, primarily over face, but rarely it can also present on forearms and mid-region of chest because those are the areas which are more sun exposed and uh, it is mostly seen in females of reproductive age because female sex hormones play a qu quite important role in uh, association with melasma but is, it is not entirely uncommon in men. Okay and what are the uh, major causes? What causes melasma? So melasma is a multifactorial condition with both genetic and environmental factors at play so there are known uh, genetic and racial predispositions. So melasma is usually seen in those phototypes like Fitzpatrick skin type from three to four. And in certain racial groups like Southeast Asians and African Americans. And uh, especially in those areas which have high intense sun exposure. Apart from this, there are many external factors which are uh, leading up to melasma like hormonal factors. Like I said, female sex hormones. Uh, you pregnancy, uh, use of oral contraceptive pills, hormone replacement therapies, and uh, one of the most important thing is sun exposure. So sun exposure that is having ultraviolet rays, visible light. That is, if there is unimpeded sun exposure, melasma is going to be chronic and progressive. Apart from that, certain cosmetics, you know, some uh, drugs can also uh, be leading up to melasma. Right, so there are a number of uh, reasons which can lead to melasma. Sun is, of course, a big culprit. So we'll yeah, talk definitely. That, about that in length. But uh, before that, uh, doctor, what happens? Melasma is not a very, uh, you know, uh, is not a term which is very common with the layman. Layman, um, uh, many a times, you know, uh, uh, say that it's hyperpigmentation, not pigmentary issues. Hyperpigmentation is a word which is more common with the layman. So, is there a difference between melasma and hyperpigmentation or are they the same? So, melasma and hyperpigmentation, uh, no, they are not same, though their layman addresses it as same. 
hyper pigmentation is a very broad term so it can be because of a number of reasons like there is some age spots or some injury to your skin some skin disease like acne which is leaving behind pigmentation but melasma is a specific type of hyper pigmentation so it is like all melasma are hyper pigmentation but all hyper pigmentation are not melasma right so hyper pigmentation is a broader is a umbrella yeah. term and uh, melasma falls under it yeah um are there just these signs as we spoke initially that you know melasma is dark patches regular light patches or there are symptoms as well associated with melasma uh melasma is usually symptomless there is no itching burning pain or any sensation it is uh, just a flat lesion which is discolored from the normal surrounding skin the color can vary from you know light brown to dark brown brown gray depending on the level of the pigment it's absolutely symptomless and who are at risk what are the risk factors for melasma so the risk factors first of all is the type of skin you have you know the type 3 to type 5 skin type and uh, sun exposure is a big time risk factor therefore melasma is seen in more intertropical countries which are close to tropics and a lot of sun rays go there other than that pregnancy ocpus hormonal therapies certain irritating cosmetics some drugs like anti seizure medications these are all risk factors which you know interplay together to cause melasma mm -hmm. now whenever we talk about a medical condition there are two ways to address it one is prevention one is uh, treatment uh, is melasma preventable we can prevent it not entirely but if you treat it and you keep it on maintenance and you uh, a thorough sun exposure prevention then yes mm -hmm. to a some to some extent it can be prevented uh is family history anything to do with melasma definitely not it is not entirely hereditary but definitely there is some family predisposition because a lot of studies have shown about 30 to 40% of cases of melasma have some or the other relative who has melasma okay so in case there is a family history so of course we are at risk right so what are the preventive measures that we can go for in general also what are the preventive measures so the most important thing if the person is genetically predisposed by having a family history the most important thing to do is uh, use uh, sun avoidance behavior use broad spectrum spf 30 above sunscreen and to limit as much as sun exposure as possible and if there are any modify uh, modifiable factors like any hormone therapies which are going on then we can switch to some alternatives which is increasing your uh, risk of melasma to help prevent it right now because you spoke about uh, the usage of sunscreen um again uh, in india i think only uh, you know uh, still 70% of the population is not using sunscreen as a regular thing as a routine thing um yeah. but uh, it is very important again in a society that we are living in with the environmental conditions to use it and use it properly now first of all what kind of sunscreen or before going uh, to buy a sunscreen what are the things that we need to keep in mind doctor in general In general the first thing that you need to keep in mind is that the sunscreen label should read at least SPF 30 and above it mm -hmm. should be at least PA4 positive it should be ideally for melasma it should be a mixture of chemical and physical sunscreen because tinted sunscreens are better at covering the entire spectrum including the visible light and it should be according to your skin type like if it if it is oily skin combination skin or dry skin you should read the label what kind of skin type the sunscreen is for and uh, the appropriate usage is also very important okay now what is the appropriate way of using a sunscreen so, and of course uh, how much to apply yeah so to cover your face and neck at least two finger lengths of sunscreen is very important two to three finger lengths Mm -hmm. and uh, it should at least be applied 30 minutes before going out in sun and to even achieve a better better protection it should be applied 20 minutes after the exposure also to prevent the residual effect of uv radiation and the most important thing which most of the indians and most of the people are not doing is reapplication every 2 to 3 hours we need to reapply sunscreen again and again to cover all the exposed areas to prevent the risk of melasma right 
Now, many a time, uh, you know, people keep complaining about sunscreen. They'll say that I uh, it makes my skin very dull or it makes my skin very patchy. I don't like the white cars that it, you know, leaves or um, uh, my skin becomes very dull. There are so many complaints regarding sunscreen. How would you like to address that? See, uh, that's a very common problem of white cast and dullness post usage of sunscreen. And that that is because maybe that sunscreen is having some unstable component. Usually it has a vitamin C, which is generally getting oxidized on uh, exposure to sun. So the best thing is to check the check ingredients of the sunscreen properly. And the most important thing is blend your sunscreen. If you are, if you are using a physical sunscreen at two, three finger lengths, it is bound to leave a white cast. So it is better to use one finger length of chemical sunscreen and one finger length of physical sunscreen to minimize that white cast effect. Right. Now, because you mentioned about the physical and the chemical sunscreen, we would like you to throw some more uh, light on it because, um, again, as Lemon, we are not very much aware about it. Okay, so chemical sunscreen are like uh, different that when UV rays fall on those particles, they absorb UV light and they are, there is chemical change in the structure. While physical sunscreen, they stay on your skin, they somewhat absorb UV rays, but they reflect most of them. So in reflecting visible light, which is quite implicated in melasma, apart from the UV radiation, it is very important to use a tinted or a physical sunscreen. Hmm. Uh, that's why we see a lot of sportsmen using uh, physical sunscreen with the yeah. white cast and all, right? Exactly. Again, in case of kids, uh, what do you suggest? A, um, uh, can they apply toddlers, etc.? Can they apply sunscreen or do they need to apply sunscreen? And what kind of sunscreen? See, toddlers, uh, I recommend above six months of age, even babies and toddlers should be applying sunscreen. That too, physical sunscreen, because it is not getting in, absorbed in skin, so there are no harmful effects. I don't recommend chemical sunscreen for kids. Okay, right. Now, again, with sunscreen, because we are today talking about melasma, and one of the major culprit, as we have uh, already spoken about it, is the sun. Now, the thing is that many times, uh, especially women, they'll say that I, I, my exposure under sun is negligible. You know, I hardly go out. I'm mostly inside my house, inside the kitchen. So why is there a need of using sunscreen? I don't need a sunscreen. Um, again, people who are working from home, who are working in front of a uh, laptop, you know, they have the same kind of uh, justifications. Do we need sunscreens when we are inside or it's just when we are going Absolutely. You need sunscreen even when you're inside the mobile phone, the laptop, whatever it is, it is giving you blue light. So it is again in the high energy spectrum of visible light, which needs protection if you are facing melasma or you are at risk of melasma. Definitely you need physical or a chemical blend sunscreen, even if you are indoors. Right. So no matter whether you are indoor, whether you are outdoor, you need to apply sunscreen, apply sunscreen. The adequate amount of sunscreen that you are applying is important. The kind of sunscreen that you have chosen is important. And reapplication is equally important. And make it a routine, make it a regular part of your life uh, style. It will really help you. And of course, it will work as a preventive measure as well. Uh, now, uh, doctor, many times people who have melasma ask that, uh, will it ever go away completely? So is melasma completely treatable, curable? Um, entirely no. It can fade away with time. It can, you know, very, very less visible with time. But entirely curable, melasma is not that. You need to have treatment initially and then maintenance therapy to keep that effect and a regular use of sunscreen to maintain it. But it is not curable. Hmm. Now, again, you know what happens because in uh, our society, again, you know, over-the-counter medication is so easily available, accessible. Uh, if I see small, small patches, instead of going to a dermat, I'll go to my chemist shop and ask, ki, Bhaiya, dekho, kuch ho hai, kuch de dije. and that's how we, you know, complicate our own case. And yeah. uh, after realizing after months or so, we find out that we have actually worse in our case. And that's when we land up in front of a doctor. I'm sure you have also seen a number of patients with the same uh, profile. Now, what's uh, uh, how would you like to address this? Why it is important to go to a dermat, a qualified dermat, rather than going for over-the-counter medications or cosmetics, etc.? So, over-the-counter medications, mostly they'll be having corticosteroids, 
and hydroquinone in them and unregulated of these topical formulations will land you up in trouble your skin will become thin it will react to everything even water warm cold even warm or cold air every kind of stimulus which is falling on your skin your skin will be damaged it the barrier function of the skin will be gone so i have seen a lot of patients coming with redness small blood vessels are visible on their cheek area because they are using otc drugs for such a long time even years and now their melasma is worse their skin barrier is gone and the additional side effects of these medications are also started to appear and which is very difficult to manage right so it becomes even more important to go and consult the right person which is a qualified dermatologist exactly. to start um seeing spots anything which is not normal on your skin please go and consult a doctor because you don't know whatever where you are applying um is okay or not so don't complicate your skin go to the doctor at the very first uh, spot now when a patient comes to you for the diagnosis part Uh, is uh, do you uh, recommend test or something tests are there to diagnose the you know level of uh, melasma etc or just by clinical examination physical examination you can say that yes this is the melasma and this is the grade you know how much it has uh, affected the skin yeah melasma is usually a visual examination diagnosis we just examine closely to look for location of the lesions color and distribution of the lesions yes it can be aided with some non invasive tools like dermatoscope but rarely any lab test or any invasive test is required until and unless there is uncertainty about a diagnosis which is very rare it is absolutely a clinical diagnosis okay and when a person comes to you after the physical uh, clinical diagnosis what is the procedure how you treat what are the treatment options for melasma okay so melasma the treatment of melasma is quite challenging because a uh, lot of people are coming to me when they have applied n number of products mm-hmm. so we have to manage the barrier also we have to manage the sun protection also so starting with the treatment the most important thing that i keep on counseling my patients about is sunscreen after that we have wide array of options like topical treatment then procedural treatments some systemic treatments topical treatments usually manage melasma in mild to moderate cases and we can use other treatments like chemical peels lasers and lights as adjuvant or in cases which are very refractory and res- unresponsive to treatment because procedures have their own side effects so in case of mild i start with topical treatments and we can use other treatments as adjuvant right now uh, in our society another very common tendency is doctor uh, is to go for home remedies right again for um, you know melasma now we have this tradition of applying aloo ka juice laga lo papita laga lo you know again we we really land up late in front of the doctor so a either will go to the chemist shop or usse bhi pehle hum home remedies karte hain so what's your take on these home remedies do they work or again they can you know uh, complicate it further i usually don't recommend home made remedies because when you are applying something this concentrated directly on your face like i get a lot of patients दैट हम नींबू डायरेक्टली लगाते हैं और टमाटो टमाटो डायरेक्टली लगाते हैं सो दे हैव सम एसिड्स एंड अलोंग विद दैट अ लॉट ऑफ एक्सपीरियंस इन देम व्हिच कैन डेफिनेटली डैमेज योर स्किन बैरियर सो डर्मा ग्रेट प्रोडक्ट्स दे ऑफर बेटर ट्रीटमेंट विद लेस साइड इफेक्ट्स एंड लेस डैमेज टू योर स्किन बैरियर इफ इट इज गिवन बाय अ प्रॉपर प्रोफेशनल राइट सो अगेन यू नो रादर देन डूइंग एनी Uh, you know experiment on your skin it's always better if you see anything which is not normal if you are seeing these patches please go and consult a doctor if i'm not wrong doctor uh, you know uh, melasma grow gradually i mean it's not that i'll get up in the morning and i'll see that my whole you know face have these patches they'll start from no. small patches right yeah Right. yeah it starts from very small patches and gradually keeps on progressing so in the early stages it is better to come to a doctor and get a treatment right so please don't waste your time in case you see these spots small spots also please go and consult a doctor before you uh, you know get laid or uh, you spend a lot of time in other things rather than uh, giving it the right treatment and treatment is available a number of uh, you know uh, options are there 
uh, a right doctor, a qualified dermat will help you in uh, getting to the right way. Again, uh, many a times I've seen patients who are on medication, uh, for example, after two or three months of medication, uh, they'll stop the medication all by themselves saying that, you know, I have, I can see, you know, fading off uh, these patches. So there is no further need of, uh, you know, going for the medication. Again, when they'll see the, you know, patches coming back, they'll start taking the medicine because they have the prescription. Only again, when they see that this circle is continuous, it's a vicious circle, they'll go and uh, sit in front of a doctor saying, Ki, kya ho raha hai? So what's your advice? Do we need to stick to the prescription and trust your doctor? Is that really important? So according to me, when we start treatment, we started with the severity of melasma. So some treatments are not, so, not supposed to be continued after six weeks. So if a patient is sitting at home, applying the medications for two to three months, stopping it, applying it again, and now they land up with side effects of those medications, which were to be controlled by the doctor, then they will land up with another problem apart from melasma, which was actually not there. So I don't recommend until and unless your doctor is not asking you to shift to a maintenance regimen and stay at home, you should keep on visiting your doctor according to the book. So the bottom line is A, please go and consult a right person, which is a qualified dermatologist in case you have anything to do with your uh, skin, you know, anything which is not normal, uh, even if it's uh, these dark uh, patches. B, trust your doctor. Do what your doctor is asking you to do. That's really important. Um, uh, we have so many questions, but um, yeah, okay, I'll... Uh, Start with Sohana Thakur. Her question is, should I wear sunscreen in those as well? Though we have spoken about it, but maybe Sohana joined our uh, you know, session a bit late. Would you like to uh, answer her again? Yeah, sure. Definitely. If you Even if you are indoors, you should use a good sunscreen with SPF 30 and above, according to your skin type. And even if you are indoors, you can increase the duration of reapplication. Like if you are outside, it should be two to three hours. But if you are inside, you can go up to four hours. But definitely you have to reapply and you have to apply even if you are indoors. Right. Uh, many times you also have uh, said that that uh, pregnant women are at risk for melasma. Uh, many times we see that melasma just fades away, you know, uh, uh, postpartum. Many a times it doesn't. So uh, if a lady is pregnant and she is, uh, you know, uh, facing the problem of melasma, what she should do? First of all, she should start with a physical sunscreen. Though there are no evidence of using chemical sunscreen and any harmful effects on the fetus, but still it is recommended to use physical sunscreens during pregnancy. And for the topical treatment, use at least category B drugs, which are prescribed by your doctor, which are considered to be safe in pregnancy. Right. So, uh, you know, over-the-counter medication are a big no-no for those who are pregnant. Yeah. Please, please, please go and consult a doctor. That's really important. Again, because we were uh, talking about this over-the-counter medication and the how obsessed people are with uh, OTC. Uh, my question to you, doctor, is what happens initially when we start with these, you know, uh, creams that we purchase over-the-counter, they work wonderfully. And we think that we have a magic cream in our hands. 2-3 is when we realize that we are getting you know, addicted to it. And then we realize that when we don't use it, this cream is increasing our problem. And we end up uh, you know, wasting a lot of time, months, years in that, realizing that and going in front of a doctor. Um, B, this is what happened. Uh, go and ask a person why you are not going to a dermat. They'll say, nee, nee, wo steroids, uh, you know, uh, prescribe karenge. What you are doing, unknowingly you are using steroids only. So, these are two things. Our viewers are watching, what do you want to say for them? Because I think these are really important concerns. Yeah, definitely. See, when you start with an OTC uh, drug, most commonly it is going to have steroid and yes steroid is known to decrease your pigmentation but it has to be used for a limited amount of time if you are increasing that cutoff the this repeated cycle is going to happen you will apply that cream the pigmentation will go away your skin will be thinned it will be more reactive to your environmental stimuli sun exposure water whatever 
and then you will leave that dream because now the side effects have started appearing and then when you leave it you will again see that the pigmentation is coming back so this cycle is going to go on for years and by the time you land up in a dermat's office you have damaged your skin barrier which is not entirely recoverable right so that's why we are um, you know emphasizing on the need of going to the doctor at the first place uh we have devopriyo shake his question is uh, what steps can i take to minimize the psychological impact of living with melasma such as self esteem issues and anxiety i think this is a very very uh, you know uh, valuable question doctor yeah definitely so melasma is a uh, definitely a chronic condition which has quite a negative impact on a person's quality of life so what you can do about it is that you need to realize that it is a manageable condition with appropriate treatment it will go away but i have seen a lot of patients who have anxiety and stress about melasma and when they land up in office the problem is that they want a magical treatment you know like within 10 mm. days doctor please make these patches go away so you need to realize that skin is a game of patience the skin turnover and everything will take time the most important thing is you need to realize that it is absolutely treatable with right amount of treatment right combination of treatment instead of switching doctors every few months it is better to stick to one doctor trust your doctor trust yourself it is going to be helpful and the important thing is stress itself is like association with melasma you know when we take a lot of stress it tends to affect our skin so it is to uh, it will take some time but it will be okay right uh, we have pooja sharma with us uh, her question is is sunscreen alone sufficient for preventing melasma recurrence or should i consider additional protective measures exactly sunscreen alone even in uh, any scenario in real times real life sunscreen application is suboptimal so i definitely advise to practice sun avoidance behavior along with whatever sunscreen you are applying the most important thing is to avoid sun rays between 10 to 4 am whenever you are stepping out either use wide brimmed hats or umbrellas and try to wear protective clothing so sun avoidance behavior is equally important along with sunscreen use right we have ajit singh with us as question is are there any new or emerging treatments for melasma that i should be aware of yeah there are a lot of uh, new and emerging treatments of melasma but there is a lot a lack of evidence to back the efficacy of those treatments there are few treatments which have come in market like cysteamine and uh, many other components but they are very new in the market definitely under trial and some have shown good efficacy so it will be proven in few months or few years how effective are they right a very common question that people often ask is that can melasma turn into cancer no absolutely not melasma has no association with malignant transformation even in long term there is no association right as we also uh, talked about reoccurrence of melasma and uh, how important is the maintenance you uh, you know so uh, for maintenance what you normally suggest i'm sure sunscreen as again uh, plays a very important role in that yeah for maintenance uh, once we treat and we are out of that treatment period of melasma there are some topicals which are quite safe for long term use which you need to keep using till you want to prevent the melasma from appearing along with sun protection and sunscreen that's it. right and uh, with sunscreen again because um, you know uh, as we spoke initially as well that still in india a larger number of population is not using sunscreen as a regular thing um yeah. and most important part is that they don't get the right sunscreen i'm sure if they end up getting the right sunscreen as per their skin type as per their uh, working condition their routine etc they'll love it but um, uh, what do you normally suggest should we go and consult a dermat to uh, you know uh, to get the right sunscreen and uh, how medicated sunscreens are different from the you know uh, cosmetological uh, sunscreens see medicated sunscreens are definitely better because they are backed by trials they are backed by clinical safety usage and a lot of things 
so i really recommend that before starting uh, you know before you are trying to uh, start a sunscreen and you want to know a good sunscreen it is definitely advisable to visit a dermat because they will assess your skin any skin problems that you are having everything along with it and then prescribe you a sunscreen which is suitable for you which without any issues you can use in a long term right and before we sum up the whole session doctor any take home message for our viewers do's or don'ts See, anything melasma uh, it's a very troubling condition and i totally understand the kind of psychological stress the kind of impact it has on everybody but please understand that a dermat is qualified to treat your melasma don't go for otc drugs don't land up in side effects use sunscreen in a good amount a good sunscreen and try not to take stress about it all right thank you so very much dr meha it was wonderful talking to you thank you for your valuable time it has been a very informative session for our viewers and um we really look forward for many more such sessions in the coming times with you for our viewers. thank you thank, thank you, you so, so much. very much and viewers thank you for uh, your active participation in today's session stay connected to our beautiful spotless skin page thank you have a good day ahead Thank you.